Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Powers. I'm a counselor here at Heritage High School. I am coming to you with some input about registering your new students for entering Heritage for next year. Welcome to Heritage if you're new to our community. Uh, appreciate you watching this video to get some insights on how to get your students set up for some success at our school next year. So just to give you a quick overview, uh, there are five counselors in our team and four of us carry alphabet groupings. And then one of our counselors, Ms. Abbott, is an intervention specialist that works with all of the alphabets. You'll be meeting your counselor at some point uh, relatively soon, I would expect. And just uh, for a little sense of humor, everybody, before we get started with the serious stuff of registration, uh, I, I love this graph. It actually indicates that parents hang in there. You're never going to be uh, considered less smart in your children's eyes than when they turn into high school students at the very beginning. Um, the good news is, though, as they get older, you're actually going to your 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 IQ is going to increase. So hang in there. Uh, I have an 11 year old and an eight year old. So it seems to me I have nowhere to go but down for right now. So can appreciate a little humor as kids are heading into high school and think they know more than the rest of us. Fair enough. Uh, this is something that would be helpful if everybody, if you could, if you want to take your your phone and scan this QR code, it will open up our registration website. There is some documentation and information in there that would be helpful for you to download and perhaps to print if you want to have hard copies of some of the information we share this evening. Like I said, take a moment and scan that as a QR code into your phone, and that should open our Heritage website that that is specific to ninth grade registration. Uh, included in that are some documents that I'll share with you here in a moment. Uh, this is one document that, that should be in the packet of, of forms that you could print out. It's a listing of just direct instructions if you're a person that kind of likes to follow it step by step. It indicates courses that you're supposed to take and, and a menu of, of options. Included in that as well, and this is probably the more important sheet, and I'm, I'm holding a copy of it in green of what we handed out the other night at registration. This is a listing of how you would put play put out your, your courses for freshman year. So we're gonna use this as a way to organize the the number of classes and, and what areas you're gonna take classes in so that you can put it on paper first to then transfer it into uh, an online set of requests that if you're ready to do so tonight, you can do this right away. So that, that form's pretty important, our course request worksheets. Something else that's included in the packet of information we've shared, and I have another green copy of what you're seeing here, it's the educational plan. That is the idea if you want to forecast ahead and look at the big picture of high school of all four years of what a student needs to reach graduation. Uh, we have students that do like to try to plan ahead. I'm not expecting you to plan four years tonight, but but if you wanted to see what that looked like, that would be a good, good place to take a look. And then lastly, uh, an important document that's also available, it's the, the courses available to freshmen. This is a, a way to kind of take our full curriculum for all four years, but break it down into what courses freshmen could sign up for. This is a good cheat sheet that you can use to determine what you might want to select tonight. Uh, one other thing I want to make a brief reference of is our graduation competency menu. Uh, if you are not aware to this point, Colorado schools require that Students must not only complete their graduation course requirements, but they also must meet a competency, is what they call it, in two areas, one in English and one in mathematics. Every student must show a competency in math and English at one point sometime in high school. This menu is int intended to show you that there are a number of different pathways and ways that students can show their competency. Uh, what I can let you know as you're an incoming ninth grader is that we will have many measurement opportunities, including maps testing two times freshman year and two times sophomore year as a starting point, as a mechanism to show that the students are, are at a competency level to graduate. The intention by the state is that students are required to be able to show that they are either work ready or college ready by the conclusion of high school to warrant their diplomas. So uh, Littleton Public Schools has done a great deal of work to make sure that we have multiple different roads that students can go through to, to meet those competencies. It is something your counselor will track with your students. And as we get into sophomore year, we'll take a more close look and, and determine uh, kids that need additional opportunities. So please be aware of that. And um, you can pick up this company's menu. And if you have questions, certainly reach out to your counselor about it. So the registration process itself, uh, 
as part of this, if, if you were physically at Heritage for this, this event, I'd be talking to you live. Um, we're going to talk through, you know, the course options you have. You do have opportunities, certainly, to take some time. There's no race against time here for you to talk to eighth grade teachers, perhaps. Uh, think it over. Talk it over as a family. And um, register online by the time uh, the date is February 11th, that's when our window is going to close for you actually to do our online registration. And just to help uh, settle any nerves, there is no first come first served uh, protocol here at Heritage. Actually, our, our system weights and collects all of the data of everybody's course requests. It does not matter the order of which you, you submit those. So first in line doesn't guarantee a seat in a class that others wouldn't get. Um, we take all of the course requests and then our computer system tries to craft a master schedule that will allow as many requests to be met as possible. So again, there's no advantage or race. As long as you do this by February 11th, you have equal footing with anybody else. Okay. And then it says at the bottom, when we get through the whole process of completing our schedules, we will release them in early August, really about a week before school starts uh, with opportunities for schedule adjustment from our office. The Prospector Online is a, a, our course catalog. It's a huge course catalog that includes breakdowns of you know what the course descriptions are, any prerequisite requirements, and, and it's a wonderful tool for all of you. So I'd recommend that you would take a look at it. If you are new to high school as parents, I would recommend that general information, reading the first uh, four or five pages there that uh, give you some general ideas of all of the policies of Heritage High School, how grade point average is calculated, um, ways that you can do PE waivers, our schedule change process, recommendations for not only grad requirements, but also for what colleges are looking for. There's a lot of really good information in there. Uh, when you get past that part, you will be looking at a breakdown by, by department of all of our courses. So that's a great place to, if you see a title of a class and you don't know what it means, that would be a great place to look it up. Uh, you can find that on our Heritage webpage. It's called The Prospector. You'll find it in one of the tabs pretty directly. Before I go any further, this is something I've, I've been making note of this year. There was a report that came out on Littleton Public Schools, and it was released in October. And it was a two-year study that a, a, a sociology professor from Indiana University spent a significant amount of time analyzing our school uh, community. And uh, Dr. Mueller's report uh, was released this, this fall. And, and the title of it was Strategies to Improve Youth Suicide Prevention in Schools and Communities. And Dr. Mueller uh, got to do a great in-depth deep dive of students, parents, teachers, to just get a sense of our systems and how things operate and try to understand um, any concerns that, that are happening in our community. Uh, and she gave a report that, that shared some really good uh, directives and ideas for one, what schools are doing well already and our communities are doing well. And then also some areas that, that we could focus on to try to improve our students' well-being. Uh, and I reference that in, in light of registration and picking classes, because one of the, the, the pieces that came out uh, anecdotally of what Dr. Mueller shared was students, uh, a, a theme of students talking about feeling a great deal of pressure, pressure around taking really rigorous classes, pressure around making really good grades and feeling that uh, not only, you know, maybe from parents having those expectations, but also worrying about their futures trying to think about the idea of, of getting into a good college and, and drinking the Kool-Aid and the myth of the idea that um, it's going to be really hard to get into college unless I'm perfect throughout high school. And I've got to, I guess, sacrifice my sleep and my well-being in life to, to take really, really hard classes, whether I like them or not. Uh, and I, I appreciated that insight because uh, I, I think that sometimes what I find when this gets out of balance we have some students that can tend to take a, a, a schedule that might be higher rigor than they can really handle or manage in terms of the homework or workload. And that can also include sometimes students taking, say, like a rigorous course, like an AP course that perhaps they don't have genuine interest in. And instead, they're saying, I'm taking this because I feel like I have to um, to meet some future opportunity that I that I fear I'm going to miss out on. And I found that Sometimes that can put students in crisis. It can be, it can really, uh, that pressure can be too much. Uh, so I ask for that consideration as a family, as you, you start to engage in, in high school decisions uh, around, you know, trying to strike the right balance. There's no exact formula to that of, of pushing your child to take classes that are going to challenge them to grow and learn, but also balancing it against um, determining if they have genuine interest in those classes, you know, picking classes that they really want to take, um, particularly if they're going to be high rigor classes, as well as 
trying to honor uh, the, the variety of things your student might want to engage in outside of the school day, extracurricularly, um, clubs, activities, sports, things of that nature, and, and doing things like having enough time to get my homework done and get a full night's sleep and, and, and engage in social uh, communities and relationships in a way that, that will be a positive experience in high school. I believe that was a good point that Dr. Mueller brought up, and I just wanted to bring that to you as you, as you initially engage in this process. The challenge for selecting the proper rigor of ninth grade, it isn't an exact science. I do find I have some families that, that are new to high school that, that get worried that it, it's a matter of trying to keep up with the Joneses and take some exceptional schedule, seeing other uh, schedules that their peers, kids are taking. Uh, and I, I think it's about trying to, to meet your student where they're at. Um, there's a science to the selections a little bit, and there's an art. Uh, and that's about, again, trying to honor limits of of what's the right level of, of challenge that will make your student feel engaged and not overwhelmed. So food for thought. Uh, and, and I'm gonna give you some guidance individually class to class. Heritage's core value, this comes from uh, our principal, Ms. Rindu, on down to the rest of us. Uh, we believe in open access to our classes, to academic rigor. We generally set guidelines for things like honors and AP. Uh, and, and these are some examples to be top 20% on, on prior MAPS tests or other standardized tests from eighth grade. Um, or having taken honors or higher level, you know, in, in middle school, but also having a high motivation and interest in that subject area. But the most important thing is, is thinking about balance and, and how much time you have, you know, in your day and your week to, to get things done. Uh, as an example, if I pull out the card and I'm going to hold it up for you for a second, the first line on here says language arts. And what we have is we have two columns. There's the first half, which is the first semester, and the second half is the spring semester. Your task is to you know, pick classes for each of these areas. Language arts, uh, there's a requirement that you're going to take four years of, of English in high school. The first option you have to choose between is to take English 9 regular. That is a year-long class. Uh, so it would be written in for both semesters in the fall and the spring. Or English 9 honors. And just to, to make reference, English 9 regular is indeed a college preparatory class. I do have students who are certainly college bound and will take a regular language arts non-honors, non-AP curriculum throughout high school, and it adequately does prepare them for college. Um, and that references a lot of the same things that are going to happen between both classes. One distinction here, English 9 says it concludes the year with the ability to write a solid five paragraph essay, whereas English 9 honors indicates an expectation that at the front end, you're going to already have that capacity and knowledge and awareness of how to write that five paragraph uh, essay. Uh, also, you can expect that you're going to move faster in English 9 honors. Uh, they do expect that you can critically analyze literature, uh, understanding that proper writing structure. But most importantly, what our teachers seem to say is if you feel you need an advanced curriculum to continue to grow because because you naturally like to engage in writing and reading, and that's something that, that really energizes you, probably English 9 honors would be the, the right pathway. Uh, we don't have a, a, a an entrance test of any kind. You get to self choose, self-select which area you wish to go into. Again, it wouldn't be a, hurt, uh, a bad idea to talk to your current eighth grade English teacher for some input, but we have an open enrollment policy and you get to pick. So the first line on your card would be to, to write down English 9 or English 9 honors. And again, that would be for the whole year, whichever of those two selections you made. So that's the first choice. The next scenario is about social studies. And we'll let you know that there's been some reinvention and change in our social studies department. Uh, and I'm not going to focus on this menu because that's kind of for more of the upperclassmen. But as an entering ninth grader, what I want to show you on this grid of, of a list of a menu of course options, which you can kind of get lost in, I'm going to circle around up at the top here. Our ninth grade students as entry level social studies students will really be choosing between world civ and geography. That's our regular level class. Or we do offer an advanced placement human geography. So AP human geography or world geography and civ. What this references is a two-year sequence in ninth and 10th grade of coursework that's going to prepare students uh, to be able to handle the rigor of some higher level social studies classes junior and senior year. And as an example, you will be expected to take three and a half years of social studies to graduate from Heritage. So in most cases, students are going to take three and a half or four years effectively of social studies. Um, the options will open much wider after you get through these, this first two-year sequence of, of the World Civ Geography and, and then U.S. History as a sophomore. Uh, by the way, for those of you that are uninitiated with advanced placements, AP is a reference of a college-based curriculum, AP, advanced placement. Uh, if you complete a course that is an AP, 
There is an end of year exam that is offered from the college board. You have to commit to that you will will pay for that that exam. Those costs are generally ninety five dollars a class per test. And based on the performance on that that end of year exam, many colleges will determine if uh, college credit could be awarded. Uh, each college has its own expectations and requirements around what they will accept for college credit. Uh, the scores of those tests are out from one to five. Uh, generally speaking, a four or five more often will warrant college credit, but not in all cases. Um, a three is passing, is a, is a passing mark for the AP exam. Uh, so we offer this entry level AP human geography uh, as an initiation to what a college level course would feel like. Um, that's one, one, again, decision point that you'd need to make. Also of note, if anybody's considering taking AP human geography as a freshman, we have an AP agreements. You would locate it under advanced placements on our heritage webpage. It's an online document that we ask that you would fill out. The AP agreement talks about the stipulations of joining the course, uh, how we give a weighted grade for the class with the agreement that you're going to take the exam at the conclusion of the year. So happy to talk you through any of those pieces if you have questions. Uh, there will be many more opportunities for advanced placement more often in future years as you get further into high school. So that's the second decision on social studies. That's the second line. I'm, I'm writing down World Civ and Geography or AP World Civ or AP Human Geography, excuse me. The next line on here is science. OK, and so science is also you have a year long decision to make. And effectively, you have one of these three options as an entering freshman. Much of it's predicated on your math background. So just uh, follow me on this. Earth science is our entry level high school mathematics class. Uh, that is for students who have not completed an algebra one in eighth grade. Many times I have an eighth grader say, I'm not really sure what math I'm taking. I'm taking regular eighth grade math. Generally speaking, if you're in a, a standard eighth grade math, that is pre-algebra. Even if your teacher's teaching a little bit of algebra, if you haven't had a full treatment of algebra, you really should be signing up for earth science to, to enter high school. The next option is biology. And the prerequisite references that you should have taken in Algebra 1, a full treatment of Algebra 1 in eighth grade. Again, that would usually be an accelerated level of math for an eighth grader. So if you've been through Algebra 1 and you earned an A or a B, you would have the opportunity to move past Earth Science and go straight into Biology. Uh, it also indicates if you haven't had Algebra in eighth grade, but you've taken eighth grade math and you've earned an A, as well as had an A in Science 8. If you feel very strong in math and science, even with pre-algebra, you would have the option to consider and, and enter biology. Again, this would be a fair question to ask your current science teacher. Last but not least at the bottom there is a listing of chemistry. And it references that uh, for chemistry, you have to not only have been through algebra one, you have to have also completed geometry. So you'd have to be effectively two years advanced from middle school, algebra one and geometry, and you'd be entering algebra two at the start of high school. If that indeed were the case, you would, in effect, be qualified to, to select chemistry as your entry level science class. In either of these three cases, those are all year long classes and you'd be writing in either earth science or bio or chem for both the fall and both the spring. So another decision point there was science. For mathematics, the next line on here for math. Um, and by the way, before I get too far ahead, I want to reference uh, for math and science, we do require a minimum of two years in each of those areas to reach our diploma. I will caution that uh, even though our requirement is only two years in math and science, for students that are, in, are considering being four-year college bound, they want to get through, they require four years of, of college-based mathematics or high school level mathematics, which is algebra and beyond. And they want to see a minimum of three years of science. So that's also worth considering if, if you're envisioning that you want to be college bound later. This is going to split based on if you're coming from inside of our district with mathematics or if you're coming from out of district. So first of all, I'm going to speak to the in-district students, students that are coming from Goddard or Euclid, Powell or Newton. Uh, based on the level you're in this year, it's going to pretty clearly dictate your options for the next year. For example, if you're in a regular math eight as an eighth grader, that's what we would call pre-algebra, your options are to select either algebra one or Algebra 1 Honors. Uh, it notes there that if you're going to go into our Algebra 1 Honors, our recommendation would be that, that you'd had an A both semesters in eighth grade or that your eighth grade teacher would recommend you for that level. If you're coming from Honors Math 8, which is again like a pre-algebra but Honors level math, it's the same two options effectively that you can go into Algebra 1 or Algebra 1 Honors. Uh, if you've taken Algebra 1 this year in our district middle school, and if you did well in both classes, if you earned an A or B per se, 
uh, your recommendation would be to, to move into honors geometry. That's our next year of mathematics. If you've done okay in Algebra 1 this year, you, or maybe a C uh, either semester, you would have an option to take maybe regular geometry, or you could also consider a, a retake of Algebra 1. We find Algebra 1 is one of the, me the most fundamental classes of a building block that you're going to build off of in future years of math. So it's very important that you have a good foundation in it. And if you struggled in that level, we would certainly recommend retaking Algebra 1. Lastly, uh, if you've taken geometry, if you're in geometry as an eighth grader currently, you have an option to take Honors Algebra 2. Sorry, that's cut off by my screen, but it, it would be Honors Algebra 2. That's assuming you did well in your geometry class in eighth grade. If you'd struggled in either of those, you, you could consider uh, a retake of Honors Geometry for freshman year with us. So that's effectively the, the, the menu of options for our in-district students. Again, any of those selections is going to be a year-long class. You would, again, write it in on both the, the first semester and the second semester on the card. For those students coming from out of district, uh, and we get students that come from a wide array of places, from private schools, from publics uh, in other district areas, uh, we'd like to ask that you would have an opportunity to, to take a placement test if if you're wishing to take uh, an honors level or something beyond Algebra 1 here at Heritage to start. So it references on here, are you currently taking Algebra 1 or higher at your current school? And are you going to seek to get to a higher level of mathematics like geometry or beyond to start at Heritage? If that is indeed the case, we would ask that you would sit for a math uh, diagnostic test. And there are some offerings that are upcoming from Miss Glarup. Um, I can, you can, you can call our school and we can connect you to Ms. Glare to get set up for a, a, an option of a number of different test dates that she offers. It's probably a 45 minute test. You need a pencil and a calculator. Um, if on the other hand, you're looking to just sign up and, and enter algebra one, cause you're in a pre-algebra regular eighth grade mathematics, you do not need to sit for any diagnostic test. You can sign up for algebra one uh, tonight and, and, and be all set up to go. Um, by the way, the math diagnostic test does not dictate to you what level you're going to enter. It would be a way for us to assess the background skills that your student has and give you some insight and idea of what we believe would be a good recommendation. So we would offer some insight into that. And ultimately, it would still be your, your final choice in that matter. One other class that I want to make a brief reference of, if you've taken algebra in eighth grade and you are looking at entering geometry for, for your freshman year, this is a unique course that we offer that's a little bit different than our, our normal geometry curriculum. It is actually called Geometry and Construction, and it's for students that would definitely uh, engage more so in hands-on learning. It is actually a double block of math in our construction tech class. We combine a math teacher, Ms. Sawyer, with our construction teacher, Mr. Sedevi, they teach the math concepts of geometry, and then you go out and you build structures. As you can tell, they were working on building a shed. So they take the practical applications of geometry and help the kids see it come to life. It's a very cool program. If you were interested in that, that would be a bit unique on your card. You'd sign up for geometry and construction under math, and you would write it down again as an elective class, geometry and construction. It takes up two periods for both semesters. So that would be a, a great opportunity for kids that are looking for some hands-on learning. Okay, so that's four areas we've talked about. Language arts, social studies, science, mathematics. That covers a good deal of, of what we're trying to schedule today. The next course selection choice that you have to make is about world languages. And I will let you know in advance that we do not have any requirement for world languages to reach graduation, to reach our heritage diploma. You could go through all four years and not take any world language. However, again, I will caution that if you have goals to go to a four-year college at a later point, most four-year colleges, for example, in our state, require one to two years of a single foreign language. There are a few out there that I see that require three years. Some students, many students, will take additional foreign language years because they are genuinely interested in the subject and they want to learn how to be fluent in speaking that language. Our three options in our school are French or German or Spanish. In many cases, in, the lots, in, in most cases, students will enter a level one with us. And I would say if you've had an introductory Spanish class of some kind in eighth grade, that wasn't really truly a, a four or five day a week class of, of true study of it, you probably would be looking to enter a level one. There are circumstances, and you can see on here where it references something about Spanish two or French two, where perhaps you've taken a year of, of foreign language that was a true treatment of level one. Um, there is a placement test that students will take in May uh, uh, in eighth grade if they've been in Spanish one there, uh, as well as French. 
um, and they will give a recommendation later. Uh, if you believe that you are going to be ready for and wanting to take level two, you can certainly sign up for that and register tonight. Uh, you can certainly reach out to us and we can connect you with our, our Spanish or German or French teachers if you have questions to see if you would be qualified to move up to a higher level beyond that. Um, so hopefully that will help guide you in some way to, to, to pick a starting point with that. We will have sometimes families that will decide that they want to do foreign language, but they don't necessarily want their student to start at their freshman year. That is an option as well. You could wait to a to, to sophomore year perhaps to get started in this if you think uh, the rigor of stepping into high school is going to be enough. But more often we will have students that will select a world language to start as a freshman. And that would be the, the fifth elective. As you see here, it says elective and in parentheses it says world language. That column is intended to say you have the option to choose if you're going to select a world language. If you did so, it would be a world language for a full year, Spanish one, both semesters, or French one, and so on. Um, if you chose not to and you didn't want to do foreign language, then you're going to need to find elective classes to fill that space in some other categories, which I'm going to get into right now. Okay, so if you will actually pull out or, or, or if you can have it available to you, the course is available to freshmen. I'm just going to make a reference of a couple different columns that are important. One of them is physical education as listed here. Our PE menu shows a number of different courses. And as you get into our electives at Heritage, this is where things start to shift from being year-long classes to actually broken down by quarters. We're on a quarter system here for our electives. And what that means is every nine weeks, you can, in theory, switch to a different elective. So if you took cardio combo, which is on the screen, that would be maybe the first nine weeks, and then you'd have to pick a class to replace it for the next nine weeks. And each quarter class is worth 0 0.25 credits, effectively a fourth of a year. So regarding graduation, you must take six total quarters of physical education to graduate. One of those quarters sometime in high school must be health. One of those quarters sometime in high school must be swimming. You do not have to register for PE as a freshman if you don't wish to. You would just effectively be putting off something that you'll need to do at a later year, but it would be thoughtful to consider if you would do perhaps a starting semester or a quarter of, of PE to get started in your freshman year, given that you've got to get six quarters sometime in high school. Uh, you can see on the sheet as we get into the electives, it actually kind of breaks it up with some bars with the idea that there's like two spots for you to write in an elective. That's the intention of that's first quarter, second quarter. And then if you look at the bottom half, there's another like third quarter, fourth quarter. So effectively, if you picked a class like cardio combo, you would need to pick four total electives of some kind to fill up those four spots for the year for each of the quarters. PE is one example of sets of courses you can take. Here's another listing that I'm going to reference on the courses available to freshmen. Fine arts. Fine arts is a category that, that, that is an umbrella of things like uh, performance, music, choir, could be acting, theater, or it could be art class like drawing or ceramics one as is listed up here. Many, most of those classes are quarter long classes. Uh, and by the way, to decode the, the sheet, if you get to see that, the sheet indicates some classes that have a 0.5 next to them. If it lists a 0.5, that means that it's a semester long class. For example, concert band on here says that it goes for a semester. Um, so that class will go, that, that'll fill two quarters, if you will. Um, most of our electives are, are a quarter long, but there are a few that are uniquely a semester. So you've got to kind of check that on the sheet to, to see how it lines up. For fine arts, sometime in high school, every student must take a minimum of two quarters of fine arts. Doesn't have to be freshman year, but that's up to you to decide when you're going to take them. But a minimum of two quarters of fine arts. One other category that I don't know if this is up here is also practical arts. So going back to the courses available, I'll reference this briefly. Practical arts is the umbrella that could be computers, business, technology, things like cooking. We have a culinary essentials class, things of that nature. Uh, you are required to take two quarters of practical arts sometime in high school. Again, doesn't have to be your freshman year, but at some point you're going to need two quarters. And when I bring this back together with fine arts, sometime in high school, two fine arts quarters, two practical arts, and then also an additional two quarters in either of those two categories, whichever one that you kind of have more of a preference to select. So in the bigger picture, those are classes you're going to want to take. And I would tell you all, you're doing pretty well if you're picking electives on this sheet that would fill either PE or fine arts or practical arts. That's really effectively what you're trying to get started doing. Uh, one thing I want to make a reference of is Mr. Cuthrell's program. He's our music instructor for students that are interested in concert band or orchestra or marching band, as you see up here. Our marching band program is an extracurricular program that happens outside of school. It's effectively kind of like a sport in the fall. You don't sign up for a class for that. You would have to connect to, to Mr. Cuthrell 
to, to get joined. Orchestra and concert band are actually classes that meet at our school. And they are both year long classes. So if you sign up for concert band or orchestra, those would actually go for the whole year. Um, you could talk to Mr. Cuthrow again about that. It does reference that um, prerequisite for concert band is an audition uh, or orchestra. It says a string audition. So he, he, there are opportunities where he will have eighth graders try out for those spots. Also, I want to make a brief reference of our vocal music program with Mr. Fisher. Uh, the entry level choir programs that we offer for students are either men's ensemble or women's ensemble. Uh, those are also both year long classes. They would be electives that would fill a whole slot for the whole year. Uh, and there are no prerequisites for those. And at that point, if you enter those courses in a future year, he has auditions and trials for some higher level choirs that we offer at our school. So great opportunities for you to get involved in our performance. So back to the cards, you're looking at a, that, that blank card with, you know, we talked through language arts, social studies, science, math, perhaps a world language, which would be a fifth class. And then that six elective, which would be practical arts, PE, fine arts, combination of quarter classes. You'll notice that I just counted up to six because a full-time schedule at Heritage would be six periods being filled. And it says on here, it is recommended students take six classes. Uh, you can, uh, in certain circumstances, if you're taking a particularly special class, you can take an additional seventh period, but it is not generally recommended unless you are in something like band or choir or yearbook. Uh, where you're going to have a hard time fitting in some of those additional electives that you need. As a general rule, we really recommend a student starts out with six classes. That would give them actually two unscheduled uh, off periods in their day. So effectively, we have a block schedule where we have an odd period day, one, three, five, seven, and we have an even period day, two, four, six, eight. The idea would be that you would have one off hour each day to, to take care of working on your homework and seeing teachers and getting some other things accomplished. So a six schedule set of classes would be a, a very reasonable start to high school. Um, that's what we're trying to get you to fill out there in the card. As an example of a sample schedule, here would be one example of what it would look like for a ninth grader entering maybe just entry level regular ninth grade classes. English 9 for language arts, World Civ for social studies, physical science. It's actually now called Earth Science. Sorry, that title's wrong. Uh, algebra for math. Spanish one for that would actually go for the whole semester for the whole year. And that would be in both semesters. And then this student selected two electives, design one and health for their first quarter. Uh, and then the second quarter has the same list of those five core classes with two additional electives to replace the first two health and construction technology. And then at the bottom of the card, as you can see, some alternates. The intention there is we do want you to list a couple of alternates for us in case we can't make this jigsaw puzzle of all of the electives that you requested fit together. Uh, it doesn't always work out perfectly, so we do need some alternate backups just as an in case. That would be a great entry level starting high school schedule right there. As a different example, in contrast, this would be an example of a student that would maybe enter in a more rigorous start to their, to their schedule for their freshman year. This student has selected English 9 Honors. They're going into the AP level human geography, AP human geography. They're taking this, the, the higher level science class biology as their starting course. They're in geometry honors, which means they completed algebra in middle school. They're taking Spanish two for their, their world language elective, which means that they, they obviously finished Spanish one in freshman year. And this student is selected into a concert band for an elective class, which could warrant that they could take a seventh class for some electives like PE and fine arts and things they might need. The student selected a seventh option health and drawing for first semester. And then for the for the spring semester and replacement, all those year long classes are the same. And then they have a business tech and a swimming as a, two additional electives for the spring with some alternates listed at the bottom. That would be an example of a very highly rigorous freshman schedule. So if you get to a point where you actually can talk through an answer and fill out that card in a way that you feel good about the courses you picked and your alternates, then you're ready to actually complete your online registration. This reference is that if you do need more time, you have until from now until February 11th to get this all completed and actually complete your online registration. And if at any point you need to stop and make a phone call to the counseling office, you can reach out to us and we can help guide you through any of these pieces or answer any questions you have. Um, by the way, if you are unsure if you're open enrolled and, and all sorted out with being registered and enrolled to Heritage High School, you would want to contact our registrar, Ms. Bailey. There's her contact information and her email. She will be happy to help get you sorted out uh, if you have any questions about enrolling. 
what do you do from this point? I would tell you to take a moment and take this, this QR code and, and get it on your phone. Uh, take a picture of that so you get that, that document open. This would actually be the directions that you would follow to log into Infinite Campus. It gives instructions for how the student will log into their Infinite Campus account. If you're an in-district student, you'll already be familiar with your account. And then specifically some, some tabs and screens that you'll click through to get to our online registration, where effectively what we're going to have you do is take the choices you made on your card and you're going to input them online. And that's how our, our system is going to capture your actual course requests. So that'll be an important piece of the puzzle to make sure you can log into Infinite Campus and that you can follow those steps to get all of your courses selected, put in, as well as inputting your alternates online. If you have any troubles with getting into Infinite Campus and you get stuck on this step, certainly please take, pick up the phone on business hours and give us a call and we will get you into your Infinite Campus account with, with some help from our tech coordinator. As I said before, the, the portal's open until February 11th. Call us. Uh, that's the Heritage Counseling phone number, 303-347-7610. If you get stuck at any, any step of the, the process here, give us a call. And I think that's everything I have for tonight, everybody. Uh, I, I, on behalf of the counseling team and our, our community, welcome to Heritage, everybody. I know it's crazy times with, with COVID things going on, but we are we continue to be hopeful for, for better times and, and the fall of 2022 to start on a really positive note for your students. Uh, I, I hope that's helpful and we'll look forward to meeting you in person uh, here in a few months. Take care. Thank you.